All right guys, so in this video I'm going to have a little tutorial on how to stabilize any kind of video using black box gyro data and merging that with that video to produce a uh, video file that will work with Real Steady Go. So if you don't have Real Steady Go, then this video is completely useless to you. So uh, you might as well stop watching now. But if you're interested in using Real Steady Go on other types of video files besides just GoPro footage, um, then continue watching this video. So GoPros have a gyro inside them and they record that gyro data along with the video file together and that allows the post-processing stabilization that Real Steady Go does to stabilize that video that you see, that really nice smooth buttery video you see in a lot of um, FPV videos these days. Now, this guy named Claire K came up with this like tool that's called Black Box to GPMF, and GPMF stands for GoPro Metadata Metadata File. And so he basically takes that Black Box gyro data that's recorded on your flight controller and converts it into a format that is um, basically merged into the video file, the MP4 file, and then that once that process is completed is able to be used by Real Steady Go to stabilize the video. Okay, so that's the background of how this works. Now, this tool is a sort of a working concept or work in process or kind of, um, it's um, not really a finished product. It's kind of just like, okay, he threw it out there. And then another dude made a tool, a GUI tool that I'll show you here in a second. I have these links here in these, these notes that I made here that you can just run and then put in some inputs and then it'll create a file that you can then eventually use with Real Steady Go. Something to understand here is that this is uh, this tool is kind of really incomplete and so there's a lot of probably a lot of bugs and things that just aren't working right. A lot of things can go wrong and typically when things go wrong you get what's called like a zero megabyte or one megabyte file Basically, the output file that it creates is um, just like, it doesn't create one. It just creates a file with like no data in it. And that usually means that you did something wrong somewhere, but it doesn't give you any errors. It doesn't tell you exactly what went wrong. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And I've been messing around with this for, I don't know, a good couple weeks now since this tool came out. And uh, I can tell you that um, oftentimes uh, this doesn't work. So. I did get it to work with some DJI air unit footage, and that seemed to be okay. But if you're trying to use it with something else, like say Vista footage, where you get drop frames, if you're like, you know, because it's 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 over the air uh, video transmission, so sometimes you get drop frames, and which causes the gyro data and the video to go out of sync. And then, in which case, when Real Steady Go does it, uh, when, when Real Steady Go uh, goes to process that video file it, because the gyro data and the video is out of sync at the certain parts of the video it, things get all wonky and doesn't look right and so even if you get to the point where it is able to be processed by real steady go it still doesn't look good so understand that um maybe you're watching this, this video at some point in the future and this is probably all outdated by then anyway but for those of you that were interested in doing this now which is you know, roughly and near the end of January 2021. This is how you do it. But keep in mind that a lot of things can go wrong. Okay, so first things first, if you have questions um, about this, there's a Facebook group. There's a link right here. And I'll link that down in the video description as well. Um, but this is what it looks like. You have to be logged into your Facebook account. And it's a private group, so you have to uh, be invited to join it or you can request to join it. And in there, there's, I think there's only like, what, 1,700 members right now. Not a lot of people are interested in this right now, but it might be growing and more people might be interested in doing stuff like this later because there's talk of like using like cinema cameras and stuff like that with this process. And there's also a lot of other tools as well. I think there's something called GyroFlow that is, doesn't use Real Steady Go. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, maybe outside of Real Steady Go, check out this Facebook group. But also we can go in here and ask people questions if you're having problems. Now the actual uh, black box to GPMF program, uh, originally written by Claire K, is here, and you can go there and read all about the uh, you know uh, what this stuff does. I'm not going to go into all this; is very technical. 
basically the program is like a Python program and it does a bunch of stuff to convert the video file. So it's GoPro format and also injects the gyro data, but this is all very technical. Maybe if you run into some problems, this might help you. Uh, but this is this links here in case you're interested in this. And also the guy doesn't seem to be updating this. I think he's kind of like done with this project. And there is another guy that created the GUI tool, which we're going to download. So I'm going to show you how to download all this stuff. Uh, it is uh, right here. So the tool that you want to actually download is here, and it's actually made by a guy called Attila Fustos, and I think he's actually the creator of that Facebook group. So you can, again, you know, if you have questions about how stuff works and if you have problems, you can probably ask him directly. Although I think he has a special separate discussions group that you can go to for specific questions. Um, that's also in that Facebook group somewhere. But anyway, this is the actual, like, uh, uh, I guess the, he made an add-on of Windows GUI, which you go into this folder here, and it's called gp.exe. And all this stuff is based on a Python, I guess a bunch of Python scripts. And you basically want to go over here where it says code and click that download or the little arrow and then hit download zip. And then that'll download that to your, somewhere in your, probably your downloads folder, wherever you, you specify your downloads to go. So you want to get that. So let's go over there and, um, open the zip file. So it should be in your downloads. And it's going to be this, this program, this program is going to be inside this folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, extract all. And it's going to dump out everything here. And then you should have a bunch of these Python scripts as well as this Windows folder with this gp.exe and this is the program that you're, uh, you're going to want to uh, save and I'm going to put this on, I'm going to put this whole folder on my desktop. So I'm going to go over here, let's go up one more level and I'm going to move this to my desktop and I'm going to just give it a name like um, black box or bb2 g pmf. So we'll uh, put that to the side. We'll come back here later. I'm going to actually end up putting all the files and stuff inside this folder. And there's a reason for that. I'll explain that later. Now, in order to um, extract the black box files from your black box, you need something called Black Box Explorer. And you're going to use, you're going to use that to sync the video file with the uh, black box data. And this is actually, that's actually the hardest part. Now, oh, you need to get this program first. So go over to that site and download that. So I'm going to go ahead and get um, Blackbox Log Viewer 3.5. And I'm on Windows here. So I think it's this one here, Win32 EXE. So I'm going to download that. And we'll go ahead and launch this. This is a application and in installer. So let's go ahead and launch that uh, and we'll install this application. And it's, it's an installer like the um, Betaflight configurator program. So this is basically another program similar to that. And let's, we'll go ahead and just run it and leave it in the background. And it should put a short shortcut on your shortcut on your desktop here. All right. So here's the Enhance block box board. We'll go ahead and minimize that and get that out of the way. We'll come back to that here in a second. And then we're going to need another program here called FFmpeg. Now this is what I use to upscale the air unit file. So I have some notes here from that video that I posted earlier. Basically the air unit file is like a 1440 by 1080 file. It's a 4.3 um, aspect ratio. If you're flying 4.3, that's what it will output. Um, this is probably what you want. Now, if you're, if you got, if you're, if you're outputting a 16 by nine file, then your process here is going to, going to be different from mine. So be aware of that. And also your end product is going to be different. It's going to, the real study goes, end up converting a 16, nine video to, I think a 2.35 to one video. So it's going to be even a wider aspect ratio. And I haven't done that. So if you try the same exact process on a 16 by nine video file, it may not work the same or may not work at all. So just, um, I would suggest doing it this way and then see if it works for you and then experimenting 
other formats and stuff later. Anyway, so we need this program called ffmpeg. So we'll go there and we'll get that. And this is what I'm, what I'm going to use to uh, upscale the uh, the video file. And I'm Windows, so we'll go ahead and get the Windows version. All right, so we'll go over here, here for Windows EXE files. And I'm going to scroll down here, and we're going to get the ffmpeg get full, this one here. 